It is that time of year again where the holiday season is getting into full gear and everyone getting into that Christmas spirit and one big aspect has to be finding the perfect Christmas tree. Hey and welcome to this edition of Road Warrior. I'm your host Grant Robertson. Now we can all go down the road and find the typical tree lots but why not make it a venture? Heck like the kind of Griswold family vacation, go across the state and really pick out the perfect tree right where they're grown. So what we did is we get behind the wheel of this 2015 GMC. Yukon, load the whole family inside, go across the state and see if we can do just that, find the perfect tree. So for the Griswolds, they took the old station wagon, but those are long gone and replaced with something we call the SUV. Now the Yukon handled everything just fine. The most important number had to be this family of six being able to climb inside. Now in this case, it was the two cabin chairs up front, two in the middle and a bench style in the rear end. So let's look at the other numbers to see if this thing really measured up to the task. Now don't get me wrong, the station wagon really filled a niche and a void in the market back then. Heck, the Buick Roadmaster measured in just about as big as one of these. But of course, the SUV came along and kind of got rid of that old market. Now, when you look at the Yukon, how it measures up, it's about 203 inches overall. It has a decent wheelbase around about 116. Now, what that all means, of course, is an eight-foot tree is going to sit real nice and pretty on top of this model. Now, last but not least, when you're heading to the mountains is, of course, thinking about ground clearance just in case you run across some snow. Now on this bad boy, it's about average across the board, running about eight inches off the ground. Now it may not be normal to climb up top and take a look right here, but you obviously see this is not an afterthought when it came to the overall design. Now one thing you'll notice is these kind of ridges that run across the roof adds a little bit better support and kind of keeps anything you throw up here off the roof itself. Now we do have these side rails and the one thing you're going to miss is the crossbars, which of course are not on this particular model. Now what that is helpful of course is really keeping the product you put up here off the roof altogether and maybe a little bit ease of tying it down. Now, now the one thing I found with our tree is since this is a solid piece of material there were no holes to maybe run the strings through. Now what that meant of course we had to actually run the twine all the way through the vehicle and tie it off inside. Now once I got behind the wheel of the Yukon, I set the navigation for west and pretty much hit the road to get to our four hour destination in the area of Sparta. Now Sparta is in the upper northern area of the North Carolina mountains and trust me, there are tons of tree lots to go around in any area you want to look for. Of course on the navigation, this actually was the closest route. As we got closer to the Sparta area, we had to find that specific random tree lot, so we used an old device called Google Search. Now, once we found it, we navigated specifically to it, took the nice hayride to, I don't know, about 4,000 tree options. Once we got into the trees, the long, deep search began, and after about a whopping five to 10 minutes, of course, all of us thought we had found the one tree, but not this guy, because I felt after a four hour trip, it should take a little bit longer. As we began to search a little bit more, the hunt became even more intense, really starting to scrutinize every tree with a fine tooth comb, some too fat, some too skinny, some just not even in the equation. Now, as we searched around, the way we finally found it was we actually spotted a tree noticed by another family. Now, once they kind of had second thoughts and walked away, we jumped on the occasion, grabbing the lumberjack behind us and cutting it off at the base. Once the tree hit the ground, we kind of loaded it up on the trailer and took it over to the wrapping center where pretty much they put it on a bow and threw it on top of the Yukon. Now, once it was strapped up, of course, we had to hit the road back east, set the navigation and head it down. Now, the one thing you'll learn about putting a tree on top of any vehicle is it doesn't always necessarily stay situated. So after a few finagles, a few miles down the road, we finally harnessed it securely and made the rest of the three hour trek quite easily. 
Now, since we didn't have the crossbars, once again, the tree set really on the roof panel, but the bigger problem maybe was the side rails. Without having those holes in them, we couldn't tie the twine directly to them. So what we did is actually ran the twine right through the vehicle here, back and around, pretty much squeezing that tree to the roof, eventually needing an anchor point, which we found here on these handles, pretty much tied it off and kept that tree nice and secure. Now I know what you're thinking, heck, we got this rear bumper, why not hop up there and really hoist the tree up? Well, it's not really that easy. After all, this is about 35 inches of step in height, so you can't really just kind of jump up here. Now, one thing that's great about the rear end, of course, is the Charlie Brown tree that we bought for my daughter. Now, it was cute, it was adorable, and was about this tall and fit inside with these. Now, there's two points to this rear hatch, which a lot of SUVs aren't doing anymore. And what I'm referring to, of course, is the pop glass or the full hatch model. Now, in this case, what we did is actually pop the rear glass right here on the smart key system, a double tap, and it pops right open. Now, what that allows to do is really kind of have this nice open area and a nice kind of void to throw the tree inside. Now, the tree fit perfectly, squeezing into this open area with ease. Now, once we did that, it allowed us to have a lot more open room into the cabin, because after all, we have the one tree on top and the other tree back here. So the Yukon measures in just over six feet tall, and heck, I'm close to that, so why not just grab the tree and throw it on top? Well, it's not that easy. So one thing to help with that, of course, were the sidestep rails. Now, pretty much grabbing that 80-foot tree required about two people, a hand here and a foot there, really kind of hoisting it up and throwing it on top. So the one reason that Yukon has this pop glass has to do the fact that there is no back windshield wiper. Well, actually it's hidden right here. Now when you need to use it, of course it comes from out of here, swings down and then tucks back into place. Something a lot of the other SUVs need to home in on because having this pop-up glass helps on numerous occasions. Heck, running something right down the middle and out the back glass is only an option when you have this type of rear hatch. Now last but not least, of course, on this particular model, we had the power rear hatch, press the button one time, and it's gonna power out of the way. Now once you gain access into this rear area, you're looking at kind of minimal space, about 15 and a half cubic feet of space, about average maybe for a sedan. But again, it's all vertical, allowing you to really kind of stack things as you go. Now, as you start to fold and flip seats, that's going to definitely increase your cargo area. When changing over to the cargo area, one crucial feature has to be the ease of operation, and they do that quite well with the optional power rear seats. Now, one thing you have to notice is the raised headrest, because when it's up, the seats won't fully tumble forward. Now, one little note is it's a little bit sticky situation because these rods are kind of tough to move down. Now, once the headrest is down, operation is real easy. You simply press both buttons and the rear cargo is gonna tumble forward. Now, it's gonna give you more than double the amount of cargo space, allowing any full-size items to climb inside. One area you're gonna notice on the rear cargo area is this kind of raised rear floor. Now, what that does is make for a kind of a flat surface when these seats are folded flat and does maybe take up a little bit of a vertical space, but what it does is actually make for a nice cargo storage area. Now, it's all hidden under kind of this cargo floor and really open opens up to a nice kind of storage that you can keep things in there more or less on a permanent basis. Now it does have kind of a rubber grip surface, pretty much keeps things from sliding around and making a whole bunch of noise. There's one thing the station wagon never really delivered and that had to be individualized space. But here on the Yukon, there was plenty to go around with the most important number having to be legroom. Now at front, there's a whopping 45 inches with the second row getting about 39. Now the only really anemic spot in the car had to be the third row falling just under 25 inches. But of course, that's to be expected. Now one thing to note about the third row, it is over the rear axle, so it's actually elevated, giving you a little bit more comfort. And they've actually taken the ceiling and put a little niche in there to kind of give you a cathedral-like feel. Last but not least has to be rear entertainment, especially going across the state and delivering that entertainment, of course, for four children. Now, where you find it here on the Yukon has to be this full-size screen that swings down into place. Now, what's great is it came with this remote that put my oldest child in charge and allowed the DVD pl to play as we went down the road. Now, when I talk about individualized comfort, what I'm referring to really is right here in the second row, known as these captain's chairs. Now, overall, it's going to minimize your total occupancy by one, but what it does do is provide that nice ingress into that third row with that open aisle. Now, on this particular model, we did have the heated rear seats here, really delivering another level of comfort. That coupled with, of course, the tri-zone system, giving you dial-in specific comfort for the backseat passengers. 
Now we know the Yukon can handle the tree on top, but it took the power under the hood, of course, to get us to our destination. And what that was, was a 5.3 liter V8 engine with active fuel management system. Now, what does that all mean? Well, plenty of horsepower when you need it, but when you don't, it's gonna deliver better fuel efficiency, really tapering that V8 down to a V4 system. Now by the numbers, you're looking at about 355 horses and 383 foot-pounds of torque. Overall, about 8,300 pounds of towing should you need it. Well, in our case, we had about an 80 pound tree on top, so we had plenty to spare. So that does for this special edition of Road Warrior and our test drive behind the wheel of the 2015 GMC Yukon and our trek across the state of North Carolina to get that special Christmas tree. Now I can't harp on it enough that we've come really a long way since the Griswold Christmas and strapping a huge tree to the old station wagon. Now we do that with a huge SUV a lot of entertainment, and of course, that individualized space. Now there's tons of other things that we can kind of look on the inside of this Yukon, but one thing I want you to take home is the fact that you can deliver that family experience behind the wheel of any vehicle, as long as you choose to get inside and go across the state. So again, I'd like to thank you for watching this edition of Road Warrior, and as always, keep both hands on the wheel and eyes straight ahead.